Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night, about 11.02 p.m. California time here, October 26, 2024 is the date. 2.1, the latest earthquake here on the big island of Hawaii. Let's go ahead and check out California. Got a couple earthquakes here in the last hour lighting up out here. Uh, the latest one in the San Bernardino mountain range here, a 2.4. Right around the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment here. We've noticed a, a little bit of uptick here recently, specifically just off of this branch area here. And uh, still, you know, still kind of watching and keeping an eye on this area. It's been elevated out here for a little while. Uh, you have to excuse my voice here. Still feeling a little bit under the weather. I'm getting a little bit better, but <coughs> excuse me, not quite all the way there. And goodness, I'm trying to be able to make sure I can complete this update here tonight so we'll watch this area obviously you know any areas down here with increased seismic activity need to be watched um, be on guard elevated activity out here across the Death Valley area once again uh, looks like uh, some more twos out there today in this little area around the Furnace Creek region where we've got a swarm of earthquake activity coming up on 70 earthquakes out here in total tally the largest one is uh, going to be a 4.7 here in the mix of all these earthquakes. Really not any main quake, so to speak, of uh, that triggered all this earthquake activity. It's just a, uh, a bunch of earthquakes here in an earthquake swarm. So obviously this area is seeing quite a bit of strain. Stretching up here from the Ridgecrest area, it looks like uh, quite a few fault systems that run up through this area. As uh, far as anything major going on, 2.5 and above. Well, the 2.5 there is going to be the latest quake. Also, it looks like Mammoth Lakes up here around Long Valley Super Volcano showing a little bit of movement as well. And there's that odd earthquake up here in Susanville, 3.5 and a 2.8. Nothing else popping up there. Uh, but uh, that's an odd little earthquake activity event that we had this morning. Uh, Bay Area, fairly quiet for now. Not a whole lot going through the uh, Cascadia out here offshore uh, let me double check the trimmer map here tonight we'll get to space weather activity here in just a little bit uh, 26 epicenters here at the extreme southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone I think it was like that yesterday as well uh, not a big number but it seems as though um, whenever we get this trimmer activity here at the southern end it's triggering some odd quakes here backstream here shy of the Cascadia uh, over the last week, it's been a little bit closer here into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, right down here underneath Northern California. Back building here today. Surface quakes going on here across Northern California. Definitely got some high strain out here uh, across the plate boundary. Entire west coast, it looks like. Not a whole lot through uh, Washington area. Nothing major going on through Yellowstone, but... Uh, Let's take a look here real quick. Gonna keep this just real short. Uh, really nothing major going on there. I'm not seeing any type of seismic activity across that area for now. The country, the rest of the country out there, fairly quiet. Uh, finally getting some movement out here in the Atlantic. It's been quite a while here since we've seen any earthquake activity out here. And if you look at the last 30 days here, hard to find earthquakes out there across the Atlantic region. And uh, it's been a little odd been awfully quiet out there recently but we're starting to stir things up out here it looks like across the mid-atlantic ridge with the latest quake there a five-pointer puerto rico region here around the puerto rico trench still seeing some twos and threes out here in the last 24 hours curl cam chatka trench up here still seeing some movement looks like a 5.3 and a four-pointer up here around the Russia area. This region has seen a, a slight increase here recently. There's that large 6.2 right in the middle of it all. This area is very capable here, folks, of producing a mega quake. And I'm talking about above an eight pointer out here across this area. And it's been quite a while. There's, uh, I firmly believe there's enough strain out here um, and enough years of accumulated slip rate uh, for a big earthquake out here. 6.2 is very minimal compared to what they can see. Uh, so we'll definitely watch that Curl Kamchatka Trench as it's been showing some elevated seismic activity here. 
Deeper activity around the Japan region once again. Got the deep activity here in the Tonga area. Uh, not a whole lot of surface adjustment yet across in between these two areas, but I expect that to fill in here potentially uh, by morning. A lot of deeper activity up north, down south here as well, leaving this wide open here for some surface adjustment uh, to take place. 3.3 <coughs> 3 down in New Zealand. And here's an odd one for you. Look at this earthquake. 5.2 out in the middle of the uh, Antarctica area. That's a ways away from the plate boundary here. Near the French Southern and Antarctic territories here across this little island region. Um, that's an odd one. Let's see what we got for historical data out here. Uh, because I don't think we've seen too much activity here in the region. In fact, uh, there's nothing in this area as far as 4.5 and above since 1900. A couple of other earthquakes up north here. But uh, that's a little odd. Definitely get some odd earthquake activity out here. It looks like uh, just one earthquake being reported down there across the area. And who knows really how many earthquakes take place down here across Antarctica. I don't think there's that many seismograph stations out here. Uh, so we could always, you know, there could always be earthquake activity ongoing out here, but we're not knowing, not knowing about it. I'm not for sure what the seismograph station count is across the Antarctica area. Uh, Hawaii, let's go ahead and check out the latest information here. Uh, earthquake activity real quick. Um, really nothing major. One earthquake off the Loihi Seamount here. Really not seeing any unusual activity. Uh, we're still waiting on uh, the summit station there, tilt meter, to have some work done on it. I was talking to a USGS seismologist here a couple days ago, and they said that uh, it needs to be serviced. Obviously, uh, that is the case here because um, since the 12th of October, it went offline and flatlined, and it's still just showing nothing. So that's hard to believe. The two-day chart here looks a little odd as well. I really don't believe that. I think it's just floating along uh, unserviced. Uh, so there was really no way of knowing if we're getting a lot of inflation there across the summit uh, of the Kilauea volcano in Hawaii. There's a tilt meter here across the eastern edge that's offline as well. Um, a little bit further down south there is one, but this is showing some inflation events out here, it looks like. So I'm kind of curious, waiting for them to get that uh, picked up and serviced. Nothing major going on here for the volcano. Uh, there's still some steaming going on uh, in the inactive vents there that popped from uh, September 15th to the 20th out in the Middle East Rift Zone. Five earthquakes there detected beneath the summit in the last 24 hours. Um, yeah, really no change going on here across the area. Just a, a waiting game. I think we need a little bit further push here over this hot spot area to uh, further amplify the conditions out here, you know, as far as pushing that further the magma potentially further out here across the area. All right, space weather activity. See what we have going on here across the solar disk. Still seeing a proton event. Goodness, that is still stirring up out here in a big fashion. Earth getting hammered here with some charged protons affecting the polar regions out there. No major roars right now. Earlier this evening, we had a little bit of amplification here up around the KP index of four, uh, but really not uh, not a big deal for auroras tonight. Maybe potentially here as we look at tomorrow night, a G1 class storm. Now this is gonna be the CME from the uh, X3.3, uh, right? Or maybe it was this one, the X1.8. Yeah, the X3.3 is what we're getting tonight. Uh, this one here, a little bit more Earth-directed component, full halo CME, uh, which, which is a coronal mass ejection there shot off from that solar flare. That uh, is going to arrive here tomorrow night, it looks like. And see, uh, it might give us a little chance here of some uh, further escalation there in the Aurora department. But 
nothing major yet. You know, if we get a couple more CMEs there directed, then we could be talking about another uh, Super Awesome Aurora show. There's a number of sunspots there currently facing the Earth. Getting a little bit more lined up here in terms of Earth-directed components here from all these sunspots. There's quite a few of them. Got to look for the intermingling here of different colors indicating complexity within the sunspot cores. This area is fairly advanced, this region. Um, and I guess we'll just see how the rest of these behave here. Uh, but overall, we need to keep an eye on that. Back around the northeastern limb, it looks like a newer sunspot coming around the bend as well. Far as far side activity goes, um, yeah, that's going to be 3848 here. That's going to be peaking around the eastern limb pretty soon. Not a whole lot after that. Uh, looks a little bit quieter. Uh, but for now, we'll deal with this very active area as it turns into the Earth-directed view a little bit more uh, more squarely lined up. Uh, overall threat, 15% chance for X-Flare. Proton event, they're obviously charged at 99% chance. M-Flare, 75. C-Flare, around 99% chance or so. And again, we'll watch for the Auroras tomorrow. Tomorrow night. It'll be Sunday night. All right, uh, there's our next storm system knocking on the Pacific Northwest. You're getting some rain and snow up there already. Uh, we're expecting a little bit of rain showers, mainly the coast area, reading northward up in the Sierra Nevada mountains as well as it comes into uh, Sunday night, Monday. Cooler temperatures, though, is a big thing. Uh, and then maybe a little bit stronger storm system there for Halloween. Although this one looks a little bit different here. Less, less wet here for Northern California in my neck of the woods. Oregon and Washington have been getting hammered there with uh, quite a few storm systems. Uh, Southern California going to get wet there, it looks like, as we head into next weekend. Not this weekend, but next weekend. And I uh, guess we'll kind of see how it plays out there. But the storm door looks to be open across the West Coast. I just need it down a little bit further here so I can get my share of precipitation. Still got a hurricane we got to watch here. Notice this most recent weather model is showing it a lot closer here to the Florida area and fairly strong as a major hurricane here around the 6th, 5th to 6th of November. Every single model run that we've been looking at here in the last few days has shown some type of development in different positions, different areas out here. So there is going to be a hurricane out here, some type of tropical system. We got to watch it and see where the models are uh, leaning towards in terms of potential landfall or if it's going to be steered off into the Atlantic without any impact to land like it's showing. But this one here, this model is a little bit closer than what it was showing this morning uh, for this hurricane down here. All right, folks, I am out of here. I'm going to bed, going to take some medicine and hopefully wake up with a more distinct voice here tomorrow. I'm, I mean, I'm hanging in there. I appreciate all the uh, positive vibes vibes here coming this way from all the comments there. I haven't got a chance to reply to them all, but I appreciate them. Uh, definitely appreciate all the good thoughts out there. A little earthquake in Solomon Islands. Let's see what we got here. That's going to be out here. Remember I said to be watching for some activity already? We got all this deeper activity on the globe north. Um... Right here, Japan, a bunch down here in the south. Solomon Islands area uh, in this quiet zone right now should see some surface adjustment. No earthquake showing up there yet, but obviously it's there on the seismograph stations. Uh, not on the Earthquake 3D globe yet, so they haven't picked up on it. But there is an earthquake. Can't tell exactly how big it is, but... Uh, yeah, it's not super large. Maybe a 3 or 4 across that area of Solomon Islands. Some newer activity here across the Java Trench as well, but uh, we'll kind of keep an eye on things here, folks. Seems like everything's been stirring up overnight recently. You know, a lot of activity in Northern California, uh, Cascadia subduction zone happening at night. A little odd. All right, enjoy your Saturday night out there, folks. We'll catch you guys out here tomorrow for the Sunday morning update. Take care.